All right, guys, if you have a question, you can chat me or raise your hand, please. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Coach. Uh, my question is about uh, Hakeem Harden, and we talked a little about his performance after the last game, but um, you know, going into the season, you know, I think everything everyone was talking about the huge physical transformation he went over, and now over these past couple of games, you've really seen his kind of game transform and being able to be, uh, you know, working all across the court. Can you just talk about how you've seen him progress so far this season? Oh, absolutely. You know, Akeem last year played a lot of the point guard position um, for the Terps, and this year we've been moving him around quite a bit. So he'll play some three, he'll play some two, he'll play some point small teams he could even play some small ball for so his versatility is really important to the success of our team he is um, one of the ultimate glue players i've ever been around just in terms of being able to plug him in wherever you need him shooting the ball at a very high clip makes good decisions and defensively has become a really good defender for us and he showed that into the brown game when he got we put him on troll and he did a really good job of slowing him down a bit. Emily. Hey, um, Eric's obviously played really well this last few games. Is there anything specific that you noticed or particularly liked in how he's played that you want him to kind of keep going? Well, Eric and across the board for all of our team, we want to be more of a power based team. We want to make sure that we get paint touches and, and um, you know, we've been able to, post Eric up and let him catch the ball kind of in that Michael Jordan triangle area catch and let him go to work from there with good space. And um, he kind of closed the game for us the last game from that position, shooting the ball much better from the perimeter as well. And, and he's doing a better job of getting to the free throw line. But I think across the board for us as a staff, we, we see his intensity level and attention to detail defensively really starting to, to, to come out. And he's making really good defensive plays on a consistent basis for us. And that's something that we definitely need moving into um, all of our conference games. Because the position he plays, the guys are so dynamic. Dylan? Coach, Iowa has already played teams like Purdue, Illinois, Virginia. How hard is it to face a team that's already battle-tested this early on in the season in your team's first true road game? Um, well, that's the only thing for us. It's just our true first road game. You know, we played some really talented teams um, across the board. I think um, as our season plays out, um, a lot of people will understand how good some of those early teams that we played were um, once they get into their conference and, and probably get their NCAA tournament bid. But for us, it's the first true road game, right? We got 10 of these coming up. We only got nine home games left. And so that's something that we talked about, making sure that we have that understanding of what we're still trying to accomplish, which is to, uh, you know, obviously every time you lace them up, you want to win the ball game. And we have a great opportunity ahead of us. And it's going to be a challenge because, I mean, Iowa, they're really good. I think they won 22 of the last 25 at home. So we know going into this ball game, we've got to do some really good things. First thing we have to do is, get back in transition because they're an excellent transition team. We know that they score the basketball and then we got to make them shoot contested shots. Back to Jacob. I think uh, last game was the first time that Julian Reese had fouled out, uh, you know, in his career in the season. Uh, did you talk to him at all afterwards? I know he seemed a little bit frustrated on the last call, just kind of a young player being in that scenario for the first time. Yeah. Quit fouling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the talk. Quit fouling. Play defense with your head and your feet. You know, he picked up a couple that you might could say kind of questionable. Then he picked up a couple that were just mistakes, you know, and that's going to happen. And so, you know, the, 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 the thing about Julian is, is he didn't play his normal minutes, but he still had a pretty good impact on the game in terms of like his, his presence being felt. You know, obviously we want him to play more minutes and, um, we were fortunate enough to win the game with him being in that foul trouble. But as we move down the road, you know, we'd like for him to play quite a few more minutes in the ball game and not have as many fouls. Emily, did you have another one? Yeah, I can go. Just in general, um, with you being new to the Big Ten, and so is Bruce, I mean, how, how have you guys been approaching just – uh, sky reports and game planning when you're getting used to these teams for the first time you've been leaning on coach Brady at all or how has that process been for you um well I mean we all watch basketball across the country um obviously the league that you're in you pay a little bit more attention to it 
Um, for me, you know, going from an assistant coach to a head coach, I was really locked in on the scouts that I had and had a good feel for those. And now it's across the board. I've got to get back to, or I'm back to watching all the teams as much as I can, watching somebody every night, spending a little bit of time studying. Um, end of the day is power five basketball, right? And you have talented teams. I think the thing for myself and, and Bruce that we're trying to just get a feel for is the, uh, the intricacies that coaches run in certain situations, right? And, and so, you, you know, you're watching film, you're watching a lot of possessions, you're watching end of the game possessions, you're watching the start of the game to see the different things they do to try to pick up on some of the nuances of their offense and their play calling, if you will, because we all have different patterns. And it's just a matter of trying to pick up on those patterns. And so for us, um, the scout is extremely important, watch is important, but so is the analytic piece of it too, the numbers. Um, in certain situations, you know, where do teams get most of their shots from? Where are they most efficient from? And so just trying to get a feel for those things. But we go over those in our scouting report. Anything else, guys? Good? All right, everyone. Safe travels, Coach. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care.